With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. We call this story The Bandit of Blackton Bend. You never had to carry trouble to Blackton Bend. The town always had plenty of it waiting for you. It lay on the line that separates Texas from Oklahoma, part in one state, part in the other, with its friendships as divided as its law. It was a bleak town, a brooding town, and its mood was mirrored on the face of a middle-aged woman who stood outside the Texas saloon, listening, until suddenly she twisted away as if running from the violence brewing within. Kill the piano, Eddie! Got things to say. If it's more of the same, Dameron, you'd better strap on a pistol, because I'm not going to take it. <laughs> you don't have to take it now, Mr. Hardesty. There's ways of settling things without using guns. Yes, and you've been planning on that, haven't you, Dameron? You've been hungering to use those big muscles of yours, ape that you are. You got a reputation for being good with your own muscles as well as your newspaper, Mr. Hardesty. Why don't we go out in the street right now and settle what's between us? Hey, no. I got a feeling Mr. Hardesty don't want no part of anything like that. You came here well supported, didn't you, Dameron? Hoke Myers on one side of you, Chuck Blount on the other. But you're wearing a forty-five, Hoke. You're going to have to use it if you make any more noise like that. Oh, yeah? Well, I did, Hoke. Mr. Hardesty's my pigeon. We know you're good with a gun, Mr. Hardesty. But I always heard you was good with your fist, too. Of course, that might have just been talk. Talk's cheap, ain't it? All right, Dameron, you get your way. Let's go outside and settle this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hardesty. I've been waiting a long time to hear you say them words. I swear, Hoppy, you must be plumb slowing down. Here we ride 60 miles to get to town, and you head straight for the post office. <laughs> the main reason we came in, wasn't it? So we can mail this letter. I'm going in to get it done. Well, if it ain't hop along Cassidy in California. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Hi, Elijah. Hi. <laughs> Ouch! What the blazes is that? Almost tripped me in my ear. <laughs> Better watch your step, California. That's a keg of blasting powder. B blasting powder? What's it doing here? Oh, that stubborn old moss back of a clam Peebies brought it in. Wanted me to ship it to Elby for him. When I said the U.S. mail don't handle no explosive, he like to flew through the roof. Then he walked out and left it here. Guess he figures if he leaves it long enough, I'll give in and handle it for him. <laughs> and he's going to find out the U.S. mail is just as stubborn as he is. Ain't you taking chances leaving that stuff around? No, ain't nothing can happen to blasting powder unless somebody sets it off. I ain't worrying none. Well, you've got to live with it. Uh, what's that you're opening? A reward poster. Just come in. What was it you wanted, Hoppy? A stamp for this letter. Oh, well, here you are. Paste it on, drop it in the slot there. Let's see that post here. Hmm, fella looks like a dude. Don't sound like no dude, though. Listen to this. Wanted for post office robbery. James Carlyle, age 26. Armed and dangerous. Shoots left-handed, is fast and deadly. Send information to United States Postal Inspector, Dodge City, Kansas. Five hundred bucks reward. Hmm? That ain't bad pickings. If you win for reward. Uh, no, it ain't. Uh, here, California. Let me get by you so as I can tack this thing up on that board there. How's Dan Sebastian, Lige? Is he still marshal on this side of the line? Yeah, yeah, he's still marshal. With Steve Lewis running the law in another portion of the town. And they ain't no better friends than they ever was. You know, I always claim we'll never have no peace here till we go whole hog into either Texas or Oklahoma. 
killer can burn a man down on one side of the street and get away from the law by just stepping over to the other. I like it like it is. Ain't no town like Blackton Bend for excitement. Here, come on, Hoppy, let's go in there. Well, another day. You closing up, Lies? Yep, I'm closing up. Once I throw that bolt, nobody else comes in. Even the president himself couldn't get that rule broken. Well, I got some work to finish up here. Then, so long, boys. So long, Lies. Hop along, Cassidy. I knew I saw you ride into town. Hello, Mrs. Fife. We were just... You're on... a friend of Matt Hardesty's, ain't you? Matt Hardesty? Sure, I'm his friend. Well, you'd better help him, then. He's been talked into a fight with Newt Damron. A fist fight. A fist fight? Well, it's only a couple of weeks since Hardesty was thrown from a horse. Don't I know it? But those men don't seem to care. And if you don't help him out of it, that Newt Damron will just beat him to death. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Bandit of Blackton Bend. In Blackton Bend, Matt Hardesty, publisher of the local newspaper, stands in danger of being badly beaten by brutal Newt Damron. Hoppy, knowing that Hardesty isn't physically fit for a fight, hurries to his friend's aid. Before we start this brawl, would anybody like to bet on Mr. Hardesty's chances? Never mind the speeches, Damron. Just get your fists up. <laughs> no hurry, Mr. Hardesty. I ain't of a mind to hurry with you at all. I'm going to take care of your eyes first, and I'm going to work on the rest of that pretty face of yours. But I ain't going to be in no hurry about it. Let's stop the gloating and get started. No use asking him to do that, Matt. Damron would rather gloat than eat. Wouldn't you, Newt? Cassidy. What do you want? You set on having this fight, Matt? It isn't of my choosing, Hoppy. Damron's the one who's set on it. Newt can be talked out of things like that. Can't you, Newt? Stay out of this, Cassidy. Hardesty's my friend. He has no business fighting anyone with his fists. Matt was thrown from a horse a couple of weeks ago, and he's not over it yet. Hey, now, ain't that real sympathetic? Maybe you'd like to take his place. I'm not begging for the chance, Newt. You make it mighty tough for any man you fight. I came into town for fun, not bruises. Then back off and let Hardesty and me settle this thing. Why not just check the bet? Because I wouldn't like it that way. But I would. And I'm set on making my point. Uh, you hear that, Newt? He's set on making his point. He's wearing guns to push it. Who's your friend, Newt? I believe I know him. Hoke Myers, Hoppy. He's a gunman from the border country. I can speak for myself. I ain't backward. And I'm saying you ain't stopping this brawl, Cassidy. Stop working yourself up, Hoke. Nothing gnawing on you that a cool drink won't cure. Huh. Now that I think of it, I'm glad you moved in on this. You're a big man around here, ain't you? Got quite a reputation for yourself. What are you looking for, Hulk? A cheap kill? You won't find any bargains in this town. You could even get the short end of the trade. And that's a mighty permanent condition. A big man with a big reputation. Well, I'm... I... asking you not to try it, Hulk. I'm blasting that reputation... Here and now. No. Hold me up, Newt. Hold me. I got you, Hook. Might as well lay him down, Newt. Might as well lay him down gently. Sorry, Hook. There just aren't any bargains in this town. Come on, California. Let's go over to Ma Feist for the lodgings. Uh, one thing, Hoppy. Watch out for Damron. He generates a lot of hate. And he's going to turn it all on you. Take care of yourself. <laughs> That's the whole list, Bart, except for some chewing tobacco for Chucky the cook. We'll pick it all up first thing in the morning. See you later. Oh! Oh, uh, oh excuse me, ma'am. I just wasn't watching where I was going. <laughs> you certainly weren't, Hoppy. Hello, Mr. Hardesty. I'm really sorry about bumping the young lady. I'm sure it's all right. Uh, Miss Carlyle, uh, this is Hopalong Cassidy. How do you do? How do you do, ma'am? Uh, haven't seen my son around, have you, Hoppy? I was with him half an hour ago. Left him at the Colorado Saloon. Yeah. And come to think of it, maybe you're a better bet for what we want. Better bet? Uh, hop along, Casty knows that country we were just discussing, Miss Carlyle. He could probably do more for you than anyone else. But 
Would he? Help? I never heard him turn anybody down yet. Uh, uh, would you walk over to the clarion office with us, Cassidy? Uh, something we'd like to talk over with you. And that's the gist of it, Hoppy. This boy is Miss Carlyle's brother. And back in Dodge City... They have positive proof he didn't commit the crime that put him on the run. If you could only see him, you'd know that, Mr. Cassidy. He... I've already seen your brother's photograph, Miss Carlyle. You have? Where? On a reward poster put out by the postal department. Oh, so it's come to that. But I swear Jim had nothing to do with the robbery. He's headstrong, wild even. He's always been ready to fight. But he'd never commit a robbery. How do you figure I could help? You know that Rim Rock country, Hoppy. Uh, that's where we think he's hiding out. Well, how do you know? Well, Jim got a letter through to me, describing where he is. Mr. Hardesty recognized the spot from my description of it. If you could find Jim for me and tell him to come home, I'd be everlastingly grateful. I'm afraid that if Jim keeps on the run, he might do something desperate. You want me to talk him into going back to Dodge City, uh, maybe even standing trial? Oh, tell him he won't even have to stand trial. I can promise him that. All right. If I can find him, I'll talk to him. I knew you'd say that, Hoppy. And now, if you don't mind, I'll run along. I wish you'd come into town oftener, Hoppy. Maybe you could straighten things out for Matt and me. Matt seems to be fretting about something. Acts as though he's under a strain. Uh, guess the paper hasn't been the financial success that Matt expected. Probably because I've been playing the reformer a little too heavily. Maybe I've been stubborn about it. I've begun to realize that reform editorials can cost a paper friends and business. <laughs> I guess that stuff is sort of like giving people medicine. Something they ought to have, but they hate like blazes to take it. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I've been impatient. I wanted to see it come in my time, but... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. Good heavens, what was that? Here, let me help you up. You all right, sir? I'm all right, but that was an explosion, oh, Cassidy. Hey, Pete, what happened? The post office just blew all the smithereens. The post office? Yeah. And Lige Watkins hasn't been by on his way home. He must have been in it. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Bandit of Blackton Bend. A heavy explosion has just jarred Blackton Bend, bringing everyone in town panting to the scene. And now a mass of smoldering embers serves as the total remains of what had once been a United States post office. How about it, Marshal? What's the story on Lodge Watkins? Well, it's bad. He was waiting to put his shipment of money on the stage. Then he's in there. He's in there. Well, we found it, Marshal. The body? Yeah. It's old Lige, all right. Oh. You better take Mrs. Fife away. Oh, that boy. Tom Levitt recognized that elk's tooth that Lige always wore in his watch chain. Well, how about the box? No sign of it. We went through them embers like rats through a grain bin. What's this about a box, Marshal? A metal chest that was scheduled to go out on tonight's stage. Money in it? About 10000 in bills. What's that, Marshal? What's that about money? Begins to look like this was a robbery, Mr. Hardesty, with a thief covering himself by blowing up the place. Which would make it murder as well as robbery. That's right. And I don't have an idea in the world as to who might have done it. I have an idea. I have a good idea. No, Mr. Hardesty, I'm no. I'm sorry, young lady, but murder is murder. But I told you about my brother was in confidence. I can't condone murder, Miss Carlyle. No matter under what condition I heard your story. What is this? I know of a suspect, Marshal. No, Mr. Hardesty, don't tell him. The man who's hiding up in the Rim Rock country. He was accused of a post office robbery in Dodge City only a few weeks ago. But he didn't do it. I explained about that to you. And I'm afraid I can no longer accept your story. Want to get a posse started, Marshal? I guess we'd better. Start routing up men, Pete. All right. Matt, will you go? How about it, Hoppy? You know that Rim Rock country. Well, all right, Marshal. Mr. Cassidy, you're my only hope. There's something you've got to see before you go. Please, please come to the boarding house. I can give you proof about my brother. Uh, but the way it looks. Please. All right. Marshal, I'll need a few minutes. All right, Hoppy. 
We'll be gathering in front of the saloon, the Texas. Don't take long. The sooner we start, the better chance we have of coming up with that fella. You've just got to talk those men out of the idea that Jim did this. If they come up to him, he'll fight. And then they'll kill him. Maybe he can be talked out of fighting. I'd better take off my guns. You know, Ma Fife won't stand for guns coming into her house. I have the letter upstairs, Mr. Cassidy, if you'll wait in the parlor. You will wait, won't you? Sure, I'll wait. <laughs> Marshal? We'll be in a minute. How about you, Mr. Hardesty? You coming with us? Not I, Marshal. I'm too old for such acrobatics. But bring that fella back. How you want him? Dead or alive? Where's Hopalong Cassidy? Ain't showed up yet, Marshal. Yeah, maybe he don't want to show up. He knows that country. We need him. Well, I'll get him for you. I know right where he is. Thought I'd get a slicker, Marshal, and a little food. Well, that's a good idea. Might be a long pull. Where's Hoppy? He'll be along. I just sent Newt Damron for him. You sent who? Damron, why? Well, has he been deputized? Yeah, I deputized him, but... Go on. And get over to Fife's boarding house, quick. Cassidy. Come on, you're holding up the party. I'll be along, Damon, in just a few minutes. Now, you ain't got nothing to do that's that important. You... Hey, you ain't wearing your guns. Nobody wears guns in this house. My wife won't... It's on your mind, Damron. So you ain't wearing guns. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to pass up a chance like this, do you? Meaning what? I'm a deputy marshal. All legal-like. I was sent to bring you over to the posse. Now, if you say you won't come, you're resisting an officer, and that gives me the right to... I haven't said I wouldn't come. I didn't hear it that way, Cassidy. I didn't hear it that way at all. You're excited over nothing, Matt. Who, who, boy, who? Well, here we are now... They're fighting in there. Well, then separate them. Hey, you must have been right, Matt. Here, somebody help me get my heft off this nag. Right. Here comes Hoppy now. What happened, Cassidy? Did Damron... Nothing serious, Dan. Gun went off by accident. Newt and I did a little scuffle for it. You're sure that's how it was? Well, let's get going. We got a manhunt on and an all-night ride ahead of us. Let's get going. <laughs> Well, here's the draw, Marshal. The shack will be about a quarter of a mile up. Well, we made it before daybreak. Now, if he's only there, holy boy, hold. Now, this is it, Marshal. Hold it down, Damron. Sound will carry up that draw like fire. Uh, okay. What are we going to do? If that fella's in there, we're up against a dangerous man. He's robbed a post office and committed murder. If we're taken with gunplay, some of us are liable to get it. So I'd like to take him before he knows what's up. Well, how, Marshal? Well, we need a man to snake up that draw, and another one to go by way of the ledge there. I'd take one of them myself, but I'm too heavy to be much good. So I'll take the first two volunteers. I'll take the draw. And I'll take the ledge. You, Damron? Oh, I don't know. I want cooperation. And you fought with Cassidy. You said you'd take the first two volunteers. It's my right. Well, all right. You'll get there first, Hoppy. So wait a few minutes before you move in. Any gunfire will bring us all up. Now remember, both of you, this fellow's a killer. We've made noise, and he could know we're here, so... Watch out for that knife in the dark, Newt. Watch out for that left-handed draw, Hoppy. You're both ready? I am. Me too. Go ahead, then. And good luck to both of you. Oh, 
Who's there? Don't move. You're covered. Who are you? What do you want? I want to help you, so keep your voice down. Are you Jim Carlyle? Well, yes, but I... Your sister Ellen's in Blackton Bend. She told me about you. Right now, there's a posse closing in on this shack. They're out to get you for blowing up the Blackton post office. I didn't do it. I, I haven't even been in town. I know that now, but take it easy. There's a lot of moonlight, and we're going to have to get out of here in a hurry, so... You ain't going nowhere. Neither of you. Got them guns, Cassidy? Drop them! <laughs> Got here sooner than you thought, didn't I, Cassidy? How do you think the boys are going to feel about you after this? Let's see now. A man ain't quite safe with two prisoners. So I think I'll just tap you to sleep, Cassidy, with this gun. Ah! Uh, you, you got him. Man, what a punch. Ah, he's had it coming to him for a long time. Shame he had to get it doing law enforcement work. He's out cold. We better be getting away. That shot is going to bring the posse here in a hurry. Come on. Well, now what? This is Mrs. Fife's boarding house. Your sister's here. Well, you, you sure you don't want me to come in with you? Uh, it's better if I go alone. I might not find what I expect. So it'd be a good idea if you got ready to make a run for it. In that case, things will be tough for you too, won't they? I might be able to talk my way out of it. Hey, you're, you're doing a lot for me, Cassidy. I won't forget it. My sister won't forget it either. Maybe we'll all be lucky. I'll see you. <laughs> Matt, uh, I just got in town, too. Guess I should have started back sooner. You must have remembered what you said. Yes, I remembered, but not soon enough. Not soon enough to get here and really hide that box? No, not soon enough for that. It's still in the house, Hoppy. Then they'll find it. They will if you tell them. I have to tell them, Matt. It's another man's life. Or mine. I've had to think about that, too. And the fact that we've been friends... You haven't asked me why I did it. That's your affair. If it weren't for Carlyle, you wouldn't concern yourself. Carlyle and Lige Watkins. Lige had lived most of his life, Hoppy. And this kid can get away. I'll help him. And you and I, we could never look each other in the eyes, Matt. Time heals many things, Hoppy. It wouldn't help young Carlyle. He spent his life a hunted man. I had to do it, Hoppy. I've been gambling too you much. You couldn't help that. I can't help this. Well, there are stronger things than justice. I'm your friend. I find it hard to believe, Matt, with you holding that shotgun across your knees. Self-preservation, Hoppy. It's the strongest force in the world. Even stronger than friendship, Matt? Even stronger than friendship. I'm sorry, Hoppy, but I'm afraid you've made it a matter of you or me, so... Oh! oh! oh you got me. You were too fast, after all. You're not badly hurt. Why, you... No, Matt! Make another move for that shotgun and I'll have to kill you. What? Oh, they're here. Yeah, they're here. I have my regrets too, Matt. Deep, deep regrets. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the bandit of Blackton Bend. Well, the stage is ready to leave, sis. Better climb in. Goodbye, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, hope you know how I feel, Hoppy. I, I don't seem to have the words to say it. Good luck to both of you. All ready down there? All set, driver. Okay, get up there. Ha! Ha! Well, there they go, all smiling and sassy. <laughs> yeah, nice to see. Wouldn't have been like that if it weren't for you, Hoppy. Yeah, how'd you figure Matt Hardesty for the killer anyway? Was that reward poster. A reward poster? Lige Watkins closed the post office when we left, remember? And you never said anything about that poster, did you? Oh, not a word. Never thought of it. I figured not. So outside of Lige, only three people could have known what was on it. You and I and the man who saw it later. When he murdered Lige for that money. So? So out at Rimrock, Matt Hardesty gave himself away. By mentioning the information that had been on the poster. When he warned me to watch out for Carlyle's left-handed draw. Well, uh, I'll be doggone. 
<laughs> so will I. Come on, California, let's hit the trail. And so Hoppy proves to the unbelieving bandit of Blackton Bend that justice is stronger than friendship. In our next story, Hoppy and California set out on a week of just fishing and loafing. But little do they expect they will get no rest from action and danger when they meet up with a lady who wants to be a timber queen. Don't miss Hopalong Cassidy's next thrilling adventure, Hook, Line, and Murder. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., the Bandit of Blackton Bend was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.